how would one go about establishing causality? Well, there's many different ways that statisticians and econometricians have uh, come to agree to that, you know, uh, are more evidence, a stronger evidence that something's a causal relationship rather than just a correlation. And so these are just the common tools. Now, I won't go through all of them. Uh, these are each one of them could, you know, have could be several lectures. Uh, but, you know, regression, uh, instrumental variables, regression discontinuity design, difference in difference, and randomized control trials. Now, I'm just going to talk about this fifth one uh, today in this video. So, randomized control trial, this is something that most people have the intuition for because that's sort of what you learn in middle school science, right? Like, how exactly do you uh, do an experiment? All right, well, the main thing is this. You have a treatment group and a control group, and really the name of the game is this. The, the way, the sort of, this is usually called the gold standard. The gold standard for establishing causality is a randomized control trial where you hold all else equal. Everything between the two groups have to be held equal. Uh, and then the only difference is that one group gets a treatment. And then you look at the difference in outcomes and see uh, if there is one. And if so, then you're a lot sure that then you're more sure that the difference is because of the treatment, because that was the only difference between these two groups. So this uh, this word, the root word here, ceteris paribus, uh, ceteris paribus, just means all else equal. This just means all else, and this means equal. So that's sort of the key, is that you want everything else to be the same. So if you were to just look at the difference in incomes between college graduates and high school graduates, that difference comparing them is, is meaningless because all else is not held equal. It's not that the only difference between these two groups is that this group has a college degree and this doesn't. There's a thousand other things different, even on average, on average between these two groups of people. So the only way, uh, or, or the way that RCT does it, that RCT makes sure that, on average at least, that all else is equal between these two groups is by doing randomization. So this is randomization of treatment. You essentially randomize who gets the treatment and who doesn't, and then that way, because everyone in the control group and the treatment group had an equal chance of getting the treatment or not, it's random, on average we know that there's nothing that is going to systematically vary. It's not like you made a choice whether you got the pick between the treatment group or the control group like you would if you just observationally look at, uh, you know, who went to college or didn't, you basically have to choose whether you were in the treatment group or control group. But let's say you have a policy that uh, you're essentially giving out at random uh, to test whether it works or not. So like, let's say, you know, um, uh, it, there's a scholarship. You want to see if this scholarship helps, uh, you know, people's GPAs, right? Let's say you want to see if... Uh, that happens. So essentially, if you have a bunch of people who applied, uh, instead of saying, oh yeah, let's, let's by merit pick the people who are the best, give them a scholarship, compare their outcomes to those who you rejected, well, you know, you probably rejected them for a reason, uh, you know, because there's some other thing different about them than this, and so you can't really, you can't really tell. But if you randomly rejected half the people and randomly gave half of them scholarship money, well now, if you track those who were rejected and track those who were accepted, who got the scholarship, there's no reason because it was random to believe that this group is on average different than this group. They were the type of people who went out of their way to apply for this thing, you know, and whatnot. So on average, they're the same. Uh, and so now if you see that those with the, uh, uh, with the scholarship money got a higher um, on average GPA or something, then you're a lot more sure that that's a causal relationship. Uh, now this word that comes up often is counterfactual and that word really just means you know what would uh, what would be the case if this particular person went down a different path. So it's sort of you know all, all that's just to say this is that we we don't want to look at just oh yeah a high school grad versus a college grad 
We want to look at what would have happened to this particular high school grad if they instead got a college degree. Um, because again, that way you're making sure that all else is equal because it's the same person. It's that same person's counterfactual. What would have happened to that person if they did this, they got the treatment instead of not getting the treatment. And then that difference is uh, the causal relationship. That's what we call the treatment effect. The difference between getting the treatment and not getting the treatment for that same person is the treatment effect. Now, the thing about the counterfactual is it's not always, well, it's not always ethical to, to get one. And in many cases, it's usually physically impossible to get one. Like you physically could not get a counterfactual for a college degree because what would what that would require is this is we'd say all right let's have everybody in the world uh, not get a college degree let's basically ban college education for everybody see their life outcomes incomes or whatever and then now let's go back in time and for those same people force them to go to college and then see their difference in life uh, life outcomes and then you'd get you know uh, you know that's the the true counterfactual so for anyone who got a college degree their counterfactual would be if you forced them not to get one and for those who didn't get a college degree their counterfactual would be if you forced them to get one right and so essentially if you make them go down the other path which again you'd have to go back in time and make that person do the thing so it's more so it's, so it's less so a practical thing it's more so a way for us to at least uh, reason through what we would ideally like to see and then see how close our data gets to that. So one big theme here is this, is that most of the work in data analysis is before you collect the data, the design of it. What data are you collecting in the first place? Are you collecting data that in the end you can't really tell because you didn't have enough control variables or, or you really don't know what's doing the causing? You know, and so, or, or there wasn't any randomization in most cases, right, if it's not experimental. so. So really, ultimately, one thing to really be mindful of is what data you want to collect in the first place if you want to establish causality.